So the, the good thing about, about the end of a year and the beginning of a new year is that physically you can't go back to 2022. And I want to say praise God for that. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to 2022. Or it was it just me? I'm really looking forward to this year. <laughs> you know, it was, it, I mean, God was good. But I, th- I think God's just getting better. And it's not because he's getting better. It's just because we being awakened to what he's doing. And we, we're getting to that place right now where it's time. Say to the person next to you, it's time. It's time. So if I speak a little bit prophetically, um, and it's for you, please acknowledge it. If it's not for you, just dust it off. I truly believe with my whole heart that every person that's sitting here right now is sitting here for a specific reason. You're not here because um, your wife angled you. <laughs> you're not here because um, <laughs> you're hoping that, um, you know, that maybe it's going to be a better year. You are sitting here because of a divine ordination. Does anyone believe that? And, and, I, and I want to say to you this morning, this message is, is, um, is not really for unsaved people. Although you might find out through the message that maybe you just are not in the kingdom yet. And I don't want you to d- doubt your salvation because He saves. You don't do anything. God saves. But I think many of us for many years, have been trying to get something out of God that He's already given us. I didn't prepare that. So that is for somebody here. Imagine, imagine, just think of this, your child spending his whole life, and I think about the, think about the, the older son, eh? In the parable of the, or the, of the prodigal son. Spends his whole life, you know, and you can just hear him in the farmland say, My Paul Moxua and my dad never lets me do anything. And, and one day, the little runt arrives with everything on him, with a ring, and there's joy and shouting and screaming. And he's been, he's had the whole time, he's had access to that love, to that blessing. And he's been grafting for a day, working for it, asking for things. Somehow I think we're there. But God has got a, he's just got an amazing way to open up our eyes when we really think, you know, that, you know, I've worked so hard, I've tried so hard, and I've done so many things, and why are things not working out? Anybody feel like that? Just me. A few of you. Good. So I I did hear something from the Lord for today. So there are two people here today, and by the way, on the planet of earth, there are only two types of people. Amen. What type? Boys and girls? No? Well, there's a third type probably now, fourth maybe, I don't know. But black and white? No, they're different other colors as well. Rich, poor? Okay. So Derek says there are only two types of people, saved and unsaved. Is that true? Okay, I agree with him. But today I want to talk to the saved people. So if you're not saved, today you'll find out. Please run to the front and please come and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because I want to tell you something, that once He saves you, you're saved. eh? Listen, you can have a bad week. You can even have a bad year. Probably some of you that are old enough have had a bad decade. Not talking to the married people. I'm talking to the other people. But you can have a bad decade. Amen. You can. So let's read the scripture together. And uh, this is in Romans 13. It's Paul speaking. He says, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time. Say to the person next to you, this work date, it's high time. To awake out of your sleep. To awake out of your sleep. For now. For now, say to the person next to you, now, no. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. I like that word. That's a good word for me for this year. 
because it just suggests that I, that, that I, that I, don't, I just have to wake up. I don't have to do anything. I'm good at sleeping. And I think to a certain extent, a lot of us have been sleeping for a long time. Because, you know, we've been waiting for God to do something that He's already done. I'm talking about that prodigal son again. You know, if we keep praying, God, send revival. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we just get mixed up a little bit. Because remember, to, to want something to happen that's happened in previous years, I don't believe God works that way that we have to be passive waiting for his spirit his his spirit was poured out 2000 years ago if you are born from above you have the spirit of god in you i just got a few amens so maybe there are more unsaved people that i need to speak to today okay so if you have the spirit of god in you romans 8 says that if you have the Spirit of Christ in you, then the same Spirit who raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Shall, in other words, it shall give you a life that you don't have. Listen, guys, salvation is for free. I'm not talking about salvation this morning. I'm talking about something that, that God has given us. He's given us His Spirit. The same Spirit that was hovering on the water when darkness was on the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering on the water and God said, let there be light. And light was there. And it wasn't the sun. It was God's light. The first thing that God created was light. When you received Jesus into your heart, God was saying, let there be light. And light shone in the darkness. And John 1 says, And the darkness could not comprehend it. Katalambanu. The, the darkness could not grab hold of that light. It could not take hold of that light. It couldn't. And it never will. Each one of you, if you are born from above, have got that light. So it's time. John 11 gives us a beautiful story about Lazarus. And I'm not going to get into the story. Because I'm talking to two people today. We know Jesus waited specifically so that Lazarus could be properly dead. So nobody can say, you know, yeah, well, you know, he passed out or... Because we know that Martha said he, we, they mustn't open the stone because he stinks. So he was already, you know, um, fermenting. And the two people that I want to talk to you about, just for a short while, that wasn't actually my sermon, but I just believe they're so important here because you guys, most of you here are, are saved. You're going to heaven. And what happened? There were two types of people. There was a Martha and there was a Maria. Martha was a child of God. When Jesus came, she said, she said where were you? And, and, and Jesus says, says to her, you know, he, 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 I'm paraphrasing, but he basically says, but um, I am the resurrection and the life. And, and Martha says, I know, I believe that. You will raise us up at the last day. Nothing happens. But then, bless Maria... <laughs> Mary, she, she, Maria runs and she comes, to, she comes to Jesus and there's a different type of faith. Lord, if you had not, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And the Bible says that Jesus groaned within himself. He groaned within himself. And I wonder why, I always wonder why he groaned within himself the Bible says the shortest the shortest sentence in the Bible Jesus wept and he raised Lazarus from the dead two types of faith one that's going to heaven 
one that's stuck in their job, stuck in their current spiritual state, stuck in their tradition, stuck in their failure, stuck in their disappointment with leadership, stuck in their disappointment with themselves. With themselves. Because Satan's always saying to you, <laughs> but you know what, eh? if you'd only done this. As you might not have prayed more, why don't you not get up and pray more? Why don't you get up and pray more? Why don't you worship more? Why don't you evangelize more? And you get that condemnation coming over you and you think, but, and you even begin to doubt your salvation. And you even begin to think, but <laughs> I feel so unsaved. And as hard as you try and as hard as you, you want to go forward, you can't. You're stuck. And so you start doing works. You start, going to, you, you start going to church more often. Not for the right reason though. Because you're trying, to, you're trying to start something. You're trying to get something out of God that He's already given you. You've got it, guys. Say to the person, yeah, hit it. You've got it. You've got salvation. You've got Jesus. You've got the Holy Ghost. You've got the power that raised Christ from the dead. You've got resurrection power. I'm very scared of catchphrases. That's why I didn't want to actually put it up. And I didn't. But say to the person next to you, you need a connection with the resurrection. You need a little bit more. You need a connection with the resurrection. Can you say that like that? Was it to each other? Say it again. Make a noise. And your arms can't get phobia as yet it's any, Gerald. You know when you you know communication is seventy percent body language. Hey? Has your wife ever done that with you? When you say something to her and afterwards she says to you, Yeah, but your body language. I'm driving the car. How can I change? You need a connection with the resurrection. For those of you who have your Bibles here, don't you want to just go to uh, Philippians 3? I love Philippians. Amen. Paul, as we know, Paul was in jail. But this, this epistle is, is the epitome or such a wonderful demonstration of the joy that is in salvation. The joy that you can have now. Not one day, not in the sweet by and by, but now. I want to say to you, child of God, that if you are going through something, if you're going through hell, you can have joy right now. You are not going to have joy. Don't let Satan convince you that your joy is one day when you go to heaven. Your joy, it is possible for you. It is possible. Jesus, the writer of Hebrews says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. The joy. And you can have that joy. And he says, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in your salvation. So how are we going to get this connection to the resurrection? And, and, I, and I love this part because, you know, just before that, you know, Paul gives, gives his pedigree. He says, you know, I was a, a Hebrew of Hebrews. Okay, I was, I was out of the tribe of, of Benjamin. I was a Pharisee. I was zealous. As the, as the law goes, I was, I was blameless. And he says, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I count that all dog dung in one translation. I count that all as trash. For what? And that's what we're getting into right now. He says that I may know him. John 17, 3 says, and this is eternal life that you, that you might know. It's the same word that you might know the only true God, Father, and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Guys, what does it mean to know somebody? Do you know him? Do you speak to him every day? Do you know what his value system is? Do you know what he wants for you? Do you know what his heart for you is? 
Not just, not just scripturally. I'm talking about getting into his presence. Saying to him, Lord, it's, it's 2023 and I don't even know which way to go. I don't even know what I should do this year. Man, I don't even know if I want to go to sell again because last year was just, what a drag. And I'm not even going to try and get those people motivated again. Do you know him? See, to know somebody is you. You have to know what their reaction is going to be. You have to know what, what they like saying. It has to be a re- In other words, when Jesus comes into our presence, do you know that he's here? Yes, there's an aspect of faith. Yes, we don't live by feeling. But he gave us his spirit. He says that it's his spirit that testifies with our spirit that we are his children. In other words, that when the anointing is here, the manifest presence of God is here, we can know that we know him. And Paul is making a big thing here. He's making a big thing here. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Guys, when you got saved, when you got born from above, can you remember that? Man, there was nothing I wouldn't do for Jesus. There was nothing. I, there, was, there, was no, there was no effort. It was too much. Everything was secondary to him. No matter whether I had a bad night, no matter whether my wife and I caught babies right through the night, no matter how how bad it was with my kids, or no matter what was going on in my life, there was only one thing, only one thing for me, and it was the manifest presence of the one who saved me, who came when I wasn't even looking for him, who came when I was probably the evilest person that I knew, and all he did was he came and he showed me what real love is, and he put that love in my heart through the Holy Spirit, Romans 4. Like Romans 5. He put that love in my heart. And all of a sudden, man, I just wanted to be with him. I just wanted to sing to him. I just wanted to read his word. I just wanted to tell the whole world that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords. He's real. He has a physical presence when we are busy talking about him. When I speak to somebody, I can see their face change. I can tell them all the things that they've never known. I can prophesy into people's lives. And the resurrection power of God flows through me. And that person sits in front of me. And they don't even know what's happening. They cannot see what's happening. But I know because I know. Know him and I'm known by him the power of his resurrection and I want to do that I want to do that forever I want to keep on doing that I want to keep on waking up every morning and say Lord where are you Lord where are you I need you I want you and nothing 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 according to the Romans 8 is going to separate me from the love of Christ, of Christ that is in of the love of God that is in Christ Jesus my Lord no weapon form no height No principality, no tribulation, no trial, no disappointment, nothing will separate me from that love. Because love never fails. Love doesn't stop coming after you. You can run, but you can't hide. Say to the person next to you, you can run, but you can't hide. Because he's coming after you. He's chasing you. He is pursuing you. And guess what? I've read the book. He always wins. He wins. Amen. He's winning. You see, it's when I know him and when I'm known by him and I have that power of resurrection, then I can go into a place where where the enemy comes against me. And guys, we've come out of a war time, haven't we? We've come out of a war. Is it just me? We've been in war. We've been in the trenches. We've been fighting every single day just to keep our heart the Bible says that we must guard our hearts above all things because out of it flows the issues of life man I tell you it was tough because there were many things that I wanted to say to many people about many people and I really felt justified but I've been justified by somebody else his name's Jesus I've been justified by faith so I don't have to be justified anymore I don't have to be right. I don't. Because he's right. 
And that's all I have to believe. The greatest, the greatest work, the greatest work is to believe. Being conformed to his death. Paul, the greatest mind I think God ever created. He knew everything. He was a very, very intelligent man. And look at what he says. Just to know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And here, just how look, look how humble Paul is. He says, listen man, I, I haven't arrived, eh? But that's a powerful word, attained, because it's actually repeated. He says, but I press on. Say to the person, this year we're going to press on. I'm going to press on. I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through. That word lay hold. He says, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ has also laid hold of me. What does that mean? That means that Paul, Paul, was, Paul was captured on the way to Damascus. He was, he was, he was going to go and kill Christians and he, was, and he believed completely in what he was doing. And Jesus Christ, the light shone in front of him, made him blind. And his whole life turned, turned around in a second. In a whole life, everything that he held dear was over forevermore. And guess what? If you read everything that Paul wrote, you can understand why, why he says, I lay hold of everything that Jesus Christ lay hold of men. In other words, G Paul was the first person then, that after Jesus, that became a new person. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Do you not know that of many that you were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? That just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, so I'm going to walk in newness of life, resurrection power. We always use that scripture for, for the baptism, but I want to tell you something. There's power there. Paul laid hold of a new man. Paul laid hold of the fact that God was going to change him, that God was going to send him to the Gentiles, that God was going to turn his life around. And, and, and um, Acts 15 says that God told him originally that he was going to suffer for the kingdom. He laid hold of that. He knew that, but he still grabbed hold of it. He still counted everything dog dung for the upward prize. Guys, and I want to show you this morning, what was his prize? Man, it's just crazy. It's crazy. I press forward. Say to the person next to you, I press forward. For the prize of what? Who have you have called of God? Raise your hand. Who's called of God? Everybody's hand should be raised. This wasn't written for leadership. Amen. I press forward for the goal, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Guys, it means that Paul was in jail. He was suffering. Paul, Paul never cried about his suffering. Paul never cried about the bad things that were done to him. But there are a few scriptures, and just late in Philippians, he cries about those poor people that were misled, that were deceived. Paul's greatest prize was his call from God. That's not, and here's what I'm saying to you this morning, I want you to get this. Guys, revival is going to take place. It's time. But it's, it's you, you, are, you are either a worker or you're an outsider. And that means that God is not somehow going to come one day and all of a sudden just pour out His Spirit. That's not the way it works. God wants each one of us to steward what He has already given you. He has given you His Spirit. Listen, 
He has given you His Spirit. His Spirit doesn't all of a sudden one day get stronger because of something happening. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you right now. That Spirit that can raise the dead. That Spirit that can heal the sick. That Spirit that can (laughs) baptize people in the Holy Spirit. That Spirit that gives you an anointing when you speak to somebody that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. That spirit that knows all things. That spirit that can help you when you don't know what to do next. That spirit that can achieve things that you would never be able to achieve. That spirit is in you right now. The greatest work on this planet that you have is to believe that that is true right now. If you, and Lord, I pray right now that you would come. You have to come. You have to come. You have to remove. The Bible says that the spirit of this world has blinded the eyes. How many times, how many times has somebody been prayed for and you think, they're not going to get healed. He's here right now. I, I went for a, bi- or a bicycle ride yesterday. And I stopped at the top here. It, it, Pastor Kerbis, it's, it's not coincidence that we have a cemetery next door. Well, you could probably say it's easy for us. We can bury them, you know, quicker, easier, save a bit of petrol, diesel. You are either in that cemetery or you are here. Now. And you have to choose today. Do you have Martha's faith? Or do you have Maria's faith or Mary's faith? You have to choose. I can't choose for you. But I know that if you choose today, you will have a connection with resurrection. You will walk worthy of the upward call of God in your life. You will achieve which you could never. You will look back and say, I do not have an inkling of an idea how we got through this. I do not, I cannot even tell you how incredible this God is. I cannot even begin to explain to you that every single little thing that has happened up until today was for your good. Say to the person next to you, He planned it for you. He planned that. No? Because now you can't blame shift. You can't blame shift anymore. Sorry, you see my skilt knee? He planned it. Did, did, did people in your life make some crappy decisions? Yes, they did. But guess what? He's also working things to together to the good to them. Not just you. But do you believe that this morning? Or are you going to get busy dying? God has called you. Each one of you. He's called you. He hasn't called you to sit in the seats. We have 21 days that we're going to fast. And I know... I'm not a good faster. I started in December already thinking, how am I going to get around this one again? But I fasted a bit in December this year. It's still, still just as difficult. But I want to say to you this year, Pastor Kerbis, I'm more excited than when I got saved about fasting. You know why? Because I know why I'm fasting. And it's not for some pie in the sky. I'm fasting for you. Fast for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. It's not about me anymore. Listen, if I look at the odds, you know, those, I've got buddies that are passing away. So every day is a good day. Every day is a great day. I'm fasting for you. I'm fasting for each one of you. I don't want you to miss God's calling in your life. for you but you know I'm going to do that see God's got to change my attitude towards you he's got to change my attitude how much grace do I have for you 
How much grace do I have for you? Think about it. Man, my senior pastor said double grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Double grace. I've got double grace for you. Don't you want to close your eyes right now? Father God, we, we, we come before you humbly this morning with our lives. Pastor Quibus said it this morning and, 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 he, and it, was so, it was so accurate because Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, we sow this body in corruption, but we reap it within corruption. You have a body, you have a soul, and this morning you can choose whether you are going to sit and wait for something to happen or you are going to say like Paul said I have been poured out like a drink offering I've given all I've given everything there's nothing I get I get I get I get all this I there's nothing where on the field nie. and when I when I say give everything I'm not talking about works because you couldn't do it in any case if you had to do it in your own strength, guess what? God doesn't get the glory. So Lord, I want to pray right now for resurrection life. I want to pray right now that you would activate your body. That the sleeping giant would awake this morning. I thank you right now that it's not a feeling. I thank you right now that it's not your a motivational. Lord, I'm not busy with a motivational speech. I am busy with destiny. I'm busy with that which has already been done. I'm busy with that which you said. I am God. There is no other. I declare the end from the beginning. And therefore this morning, thank you that you have shown each one the end from the beginning. So therefore they do not have to, they do not have to worry. They do not have to care. They do not have to have even try. Because you are for them and not against them so Lord I thank you right now would you come and do a work if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit I want you to start praying right now in the Spirit as you're sitting there just start to pray in the Spirit because there are people next to you that might have unbelief right now there are people next to you that think that God is not going to give them another chance there are people next to you that are thinking that yeah 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 Satan is busy right now trying to stop what God is doing and I want you to pray let's pray let's stir up let's stir up pray 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 if you need to repent, if you need to repent, repent there right where you are right now. I don't want to call you to the front. If you can't, if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want you to ask God to baptize you right now. Amen. If you want to be baptized, just raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Say, Lord, baptize me. Baptize me. If there are people around you, just touch those people. As they're sitting there, raise your hand if you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost again. If you've, right now, guys, come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray right now. If you want to stand and pray, you can stand and pray right now. I want you to get up. I want you to get up right now. Keep your hands on those people. Let's start to pray. Let's stir, the, let's stir the atmosphere. Let's stir the atmosphere. You have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwells in you, and it's ready to quicken right now. Yes, Lord, this is not an emotional thing. Thank you, Lord. There is faith rising in your heart right now. There is faith rising in each one. Come on, let's stir up. Let's stir up the gift that is within us. Let's stir up our destiny right now. He's not going to steal it. If you're not baptized, just start to pray with your pray with your natural language right now. Pray. Just start to pray. Start to give him glory. You thank him. Don't ask him. Thank him. Thank him right now for what he's done. Thank him for what he's done in your life. Thank him for what he's already going to do in your life right now. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. There is a change in the atmosphere right now. Guys, there's a change. Don't stop. Don't stop. Every time we get to the door, then we move back. Don't. Go through right now. Go through. Break through. Press on. Press on. Let's start to pray. Come on. We're serious about God. We are serious about Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Break through right now. Yes. Lord, thank you. The shackles have been broken. The shackles of disappointment. The shackles of past hurts. Broken right now. Just receive it. Just receive it right now.